I'm here for a weld test and an interview. So, you got any hobbies? Ma. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're down here in Houston, Texas, AKA Cypress, where we're at JK Welding, the custom job shop, whether it's a singing tree or giant cross, the man himself puts it together. Hey, everybody, John King here. Welcome to the world of custom fabrication. Welcome to Texas. <laughs> So what is exactly a custom job shop? Do you focus on structural or pipe or what do you? We have the ability and the knowledge and the skill set, the confidence to be able to create and build a lot of things that most companies or most people don't want anything to do with, you know? So it's very custom. What do you think is your most favorite custom build? Oh man, I, there's so many, I can't name any. The singing tree is amazing. The singing tree is amazing, the cross, the pirate ship, I mean, there's so much, and we even have a new project coming up. It's gonna break the Guinness Book of World Records here very soon, but I can't reveal it to you just yet, but we're about to. Now, as far as a quality employee, I know you've got tons of them here. What's the biggest hurdle as far as finding new people? You got this new shop opening, you got to fill it full of people, you've got tons of work. Yeah, well, that's the biggest hurdle in the welding business, especially these days, is finding quality hands, quality people that have higher skill levels for a custom job shop like this. We use various apps. We also ask you know, employees if they have someone that they can recommend. You know, There's different ways and different techniques we have to draw people in. Something that I've always told uh, a lot of people is there's actually no shortage in welders. There's a shortage of quality. There's a shortage in fabricators. There's a right. shortage in people and employees understanding math, geometry, trigonometry, being able to pull the things together that do get welded. People spend way too much time behind the hood mastering the weld when they should be working on their math and working on fabricating and putting things together. How much percentage is actually hands-on welding under the hood? Well, I would have to say probably 30%, 35%. What other skills and talents do they need other than welding? Like I tell everybody when I do the speeches in the public for welding in the welding industry, math is so important. If you don't know it, go back to school. Go back to school at night, get close to the veterans at a welding job at a weld shop in your local area. You know, but get close to the veterans, learn your math, go back to school, learn to read blueprints. Those are the important values of yourself. And you do nothing but raise your value of yourself yeah. with the company you're working for when I mean, you do find a good job, you know? Billy Ray, I see What's you're up? laying some stuff out. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it within a quarter inch. <laughs> that's what you're doing for the holes there? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. Hey, sometimes it ain't all that tricky, is it? No. <laughs> When it comes to fabrication and knowing some tricks of the trade, like what's a couple tricks that you might could? Oh, I got a lot of them. I've been doing this for 33 years. <laughs> what's a trick to keeping something square like stainless? Something that everybody needs to keep in mind is that, you know, stainless and aluminum will pull a lot, a lot more than carbon steel when you tack it. Sometimes you're going to have to compensate for the pull in order to make something square. So when you're fitting it up with no tacks on it at all and you want it to be 90 degrees square, you lay it back a little bit or you lean it the other way to compensate for the pull. That way when you go to the other side, you're dead nuts. So if I had just like a piece of, say quarter inch plate on a piece of quarter inch, like a T-joint, yeah. and the sides are tacked and I gotta make a long seam, how much do I wanna compensate for a stainless? Carbon, stainless, or aluminum, either one. You wanna put a good size tack on the other side if you're gonna make that long run all the way down. You gotta have something holding it. You gotta have something on the back side. Mistakes happen. Not here, not here, no, <laughs> never. never. Never, not here at JK Welding. What kind of advice would you give someone that gets really frustrated of having to fix other people's stuff? Is it something that, as a welder, you should get mad about because you're having to do rework? Or should have maybe have the attitude, hey, you get paid by the hour, you gotta do it anyway. Well, the whole saying, you get paid by the hour, that comes into effect a lot. Yeah. You mess something up, I mean, it's one of those things, you measure three times, you cut once. Try not to mess up. Not twice, three times. Yeah. Get somebody else to check it. Take your time. Right? Take your time. Get it right the first time. So how important is it here to know shop drawings? 
it's pretty important. It's like the Bible almost. Yeah, I mean, you need to know. If you're a fitter, you need to know weld symbols, you need to know takeoffs, you need to know all that stuff. When you're looking at a print, you need to know what you're looking at. You need to know that you're going into it with the confidence that you can build that product. Hey man, I appreciate you, Billy Ray. Thanks yeah. for your time. Yes, sir. Now you got a lot of big equipment in here, John. It's, it's dangerous, right? It takes a trained individual to operate some of this stuff. Right? It does. Well, first of all, if you come and you show your loyalty with the company, as far as like showing up on time, you play well with others, and you do good and you're respectful, we take the time to teach you the machines and, and show you how to operate them. Then you become a more of an asset to yourself and the company. The company also can utilize you for different aspects of the work. Welding is 35% of the job. You know, there's a lot of fabricating, cutting and bending, drilling, milling. There's a lot of drill tapping to do. There's a lot of forming the metal and, and tacking it and getting it ready for the welder, you know? Would you help me get my forklift certification? Oh yeah, we can get Woo, that. I'll get down, put that on my resume. Yeah, real yeah, quick. me too. You can be a forklift <laughs> certified operator like me. We got a pretty hot topic over here. Sharon just brought it to my attention. It's something that's on both of our minds. Let's hit him with it. So, welding school, yes or no? Should I go help her? Should I do whatever it is? You know, my opinion personally, it's like. Bro, if you know what you want to do in, in this welding industry, it's so vast, you can go so many different directions. If you know where you want to go in this industry, whether it be pipeline or refineries or a fab shop, find those fab shops. Right. Find that pipeliner to go ask them to be your helper. Network yourself to get into that starting position. If you don't know exactly where you're going, you just know you want to weld, I think it's a, it's a great start. It was a great start for me because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it just really got me like, ahead and you know even in my first job you know I felt like it put me just a little bit ahead than I would have if I would have just jumped into it. And I did so. I did welding school too and I, I wanted to be a pipeline I was like I want a pipeline <laughs> that was like everyone in my hometown that's all they did was <laughs> pipeline so I was like that's what I want to do but my dad said you got to get an education yeah. and when I actually got there changed my point of view completely yeah. I knew that there was something else there was something more to try. <laughs> Sorry about that, Sharon. Uh, we're doing a bit of aluminum, huh? Yes, some aluminum today. So what's important about this aluminum is whenever you go to bending it, right, it can have the tendency to crack, no? Uh, yes, yes, so it, sometimes that will happen. So if, while we're prepping it, if there's any of these like small abrasions in it, um, I will go back and just do a little run on them. And then just, you know, uh, with that thing, just grind it down smooth so that we prevent it like completely breaking whenever we're bending it. Why is this <laughs> a better version of sanding than a flap disc? So this one's just a little bit more smooth. It blends it in a little bit better. Um, and the flap disc will just kind of like tend to like eat away. Kind of puts more, grooves yeah, in Yeah, like more You're trying to take material. away grooves, not put them back in, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so this will just like, you know, make it keep it a little bit more smooth. Right, this thing grinds left, right, sideways, up yeah, and down, all yeah. the kinds of directions. As always, guys, thanks for watching. It's time for me to wet a line. See you guys next time. <laughs> hey, that ain't bad for a Monday. Beats work. <laughs>